Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm so excited. I got my spiritual sisters here with me today. Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. And of course, Amanda from, from Higher Self Perspective, if I can speak now. And I, I, I was a little giggly when I pressed the record button because we were laughing at my new microphone about how it looks like, we'll say it looks like a messiah because a messiah means a phallical pillar. <laughs> has been caressing that thing <laughs> you know, the way you were holding it was like a little raunchy hands. i'm still getting used to it but as i said before we hit record they say once you go black you don't go back so sassy <laughs> sassy <laughs> don't post that on tiktok I don't yet do a whole world community coming after you for that one <laughs> I've, never, I've never gone black so i don't know so Canceled. <laughs> anyway, but before we get into it, guys, I do want to remind you of Stephanie and Amanda's channels, and I'll put their websites in the description box, too. So, of course, this is Spiritual Awakenings of Our Great, so Spiritual Awakenings, Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. It's been a long day, you guys. It's been a long day. And then, of course, Amanda here with Higher Self Perspective. Okay, so I'm also going to be putting, again, their websites up so you guys can look more at the services that they offer. Which, speaking of, um, actually, no, let's back up a minute. So speaking about the, the penis, now it's gotten my mind all scrambled. Um, <laughs> yeah, something's going on here. <sighs> There we, we can go. laugh, right? That's something <laughs> that the light can do that the darkness can't do. Is we can laugh, we can laugh at exactly. ourselves. So, exactly. Stephanie, what is happening next Friday, the twenty third of December? So, anyways, too bad I don't have a drum to do a drum roll. But I was doing a show with um our friend Angie the other day. We're talking about the loneliness of Christmas, and I. Same voice that made me put up my channel, same voice that makes, you know, my higher self, whatever you want to call it, intuition. I heard make an online Zoom Christmas party. And I'm like, well, that's fascinating. Okay. So I kind of like sat on it, you know, just kind of thought about it. And a lot of us are going through a lot of lonely times during this holiday season, especially with the great divide with different belief systems and God forbid anybody has different belief systems in this society. You know, there's a lot of alienation um, within the family unit and friends. And so I know a lot of our online subscribers or online family here um, will be celebrating the holiday alone, or they're going to be with their family and feel like the black sheep because they're the quote unquote conspiracy theorists. So I am putting together and I've already created the, um, the Zoom link. Sorry, I got a hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, I already put together the Zoom link. So on the 23rd, which is this coming Friday, between 5 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I want people to dress in their ugliest Christmas sweater, get your jingle bell earrings out, your little antlers on your hat or your Santa hats, get some wine or whatever, get some cookies and your, your food, and we're going to have a Christmas party, and we're going to celebrate together as an online Soul Tribe family. That's amazing. And you're all invited. Everybody okay. watching right now, you are invited. I'm going to put a link to Stephanie's video also in the description box below where she talks about this, and I will share it on my community tab. And once Stephanie she I have the Zoom link as well, but once Stephanie shares the Zoom link, I will also share the Zoom link probably the morning of the 23rd. Yes, morning. Um, on the 23rd i will be sharing that zoom link it'll be on my community tab um and then i will also be putting it in the signal chat too for the 30-day challenge people yes so please join us that is eastern standard time guys so that is the east coast of the united states so the new york city time atlanta georgia time so just make sure that you check your local i know like amanda's an hour behind us so that would be four to six her time so just check your local listing time um and it's two hours so if you can only hop in for five minutes then hop in for five minutes we'd love to see you it's not oh, going to be recorded sure how many people zoom will let me have on 100. i think it's 100 i already looked at this yeah and if you want to see multiple faces you go to the view at the top of well i'll explain that when people come on but yeah um, yeah so, it'll be fun It'll be fun. It'll be, I'm excited. It'll be a lot of fun. I might have a beer on camera. It's, you know, I'm not opposed. I know a lot of people in this 
I'm going to be making Christmas cookies and a, a meal. Like I'm my, my friend Lindsay's going to come over for it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Really is. I mean, I have Ravi, my dog has a sweater that says Santa's little helper. Aw, so cute. So I'm, but I'm just excited because then we can, you know, more, more of us can meet face to face. I know it's not like in person, but at least, you know, we're connecting. Yeah. Because we are, we all are connected, uh, spiritually speaking. You know what I mean? And listen, I'm going to say, and we can talk about this later. I know, Steph, we've talked about this offline. This last week has been like a roller coaster mm. of emotions and frustrations. And I know people are getting very upset with the good guys in this battle. Like they're losing c credibility. Um, and I know that this is battle fatigue. You know, we, I didn't think any of us thought we'd still be sitting here in December 2022. Um, I know there's a lot not going really. on, though. I know, I, I, it, but it, it's not happening at the rapid speed we want it to happen. And so I, we understand that. We are feeling battle fatigue as well. And that's just normal. That's just you being a human being. You're in a human body that 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 needs to rest sometimes. And we're going to kind of talk about that towards the end of the um, episode when we talk more about spiritual hygiene. But I just want to validate that for everybody watching. Um I know I wear my heart on my sleeve a lot, but I also think that sometimes when you're sitting behind a camera, you come across as maybe a little bit tougher than you really are. And I want you guys to understand that we are also feeling the pain as well. I think I can speak for us and we're we're ready for this shit to be over too. I, I mean, I, I think, I don't know one person that's behind this. Well, actually there's probably 90% of the truth are sitting behind the camera that don't want this shit to be over because they're not really playing for our team, but that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> but the genuine people out there that are trying to help humanity, we're tired too. We understand this is a battle. This is a war. This is not a movie. This is your life and this is our lives. And sometimes that loneliness, it is very lonely when you have been ostracized from people i'm very lucky because in my life i have a lot of people who are awake so i feel very lucky that way but i ha i do have people that i've lost because half of the yoga community i lost because of of this so we get it we understand yeah i had people really? try to get my authorization revoked didn't oh. happen that's like kind of it really took me by surprise actually yeah so one kind of went woke and the other one actually started remembering, I guess. Well, this is the interesting thing is that um, the, 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 the crux of yoga, and I think all spiritual practices, not just yoga, is seeing the truth through the illusion. And so yeah. that starts with yourself, like understanding that who you think you are is not really who you are. Um, and that's where human suffering comes from, because who you think you are is this identity in this life that is not permanent, Right. And so that's where suffering comes from. And so who are you really? Well, you work on yourself first and you start to work through that trauma of that. But then you also start to see, once you see it through yourself, you see the truth and other things as well. And so it is a great divide. But And even though it's been hard, I think, and I tell people, I tell my yoga students, my yoga course, like, if you're going to a yoga studio that's requiring this or this, don't go to that studio. In my, in, I have to say, in my opinion. Because they don't see the truth through the illusion. That's also dangerous. It's very dangerous. And they're one of these when you're doing yoga. Oh my god, I I could. We don't allow it in the Ashtanga of Mysore, and we won't allow this because that is a liability. You're breathing so heavily in that practice; your heart rate is is rising. Yeah. You're breathing carbon dioxide. That is a liability. If you're not comfortable practicing without this on, then you don't need to be coming to the Mysore room yet. Um, you know, and so, so there is a, there's a good number of people in the Ashtanga world who are aware and who have reacted properly. And I have to be careful about what I say. They've re reacted in integrity and are just like us, but to the people who, um, who have not, are not aware in the yoga world, my question to you is, what have you been doing all these years on your yoga mat? Gymnastics? Because the whole practice is about studying yourself. There's a really big, famous yoga teacher, Ashtanga teacher out of Miami. I'm not going to say her name, but she's very, very famous. I like her. I know her. I like her as a person. She's not awake. And she's one of the biggest celebrity Ashtanga teachers out there. And I want to be like, what have you been doing for the past 20 years? To not 
Because to me, this is very much like an open book test. Like it's so freaking obvious at this point. And I have to shout out, I'm going to put this up episode down in the description box below. I have to give a shout out. Didn't even think I was going to talk about this, but Steph and I spoke about this morning to the celebrity comedian, Heather McDonald. She runs a podcast called Juicy Scoop. She's hysterical. I really like when I need it to decompress, I'll listen to her sometimes because she's really funny. And um, she basically did a whole breakdown on Balenciaga and she got into this, the zapper, this in this episode. Zapper and like that. Yeah, that's what Shanta calls the zapper. <laughs> she, got it. she got the zapper, the first one. And she was one in that that documentary that was released that I can't say on this channel. You guys know what I'm talking about, about the zapper. Her passing out on stage during one of her stand-up routines was documented. And she was very cool about it in this podcast where she was like, absolutely. I thought I was doing the right thing. But this information is being blocked and it shouldn't be. So I have to really shout out out of all the celebrities in Hollywood. And she's she's pretty famous. I have to shout her out because she really took a gamble by really speaking out about Balenciaga and this in one podcast, you know, and I, I thank you. I don't, Heather, I don't think you're going to see this because I think you're too famous for that to be watching us. But, but I, I, I thank you, Heather McDonald for actually it, kind of admitting where maybe you had messed up and, and being cool with that and being a, a proponent of free speech and a proponent of everybody having all the information and for really talking about the darkness in this world that those of us have been trying to speak about for years now and we keep getting shut down but you have a huge platform and you're taking the reins and, and you're talking about it and i personally when i saw her do that i got emotional i was like thank you god like that there's somebody with a bigger platform that's starting to speak about this now in a very serious way so i will put that also in the description box below guys if you want to listen to her podcast um you know so Anyway, so let's get into this. Amanda, Amanda, can you give us a breakdown of what it's like to do quantum healing with you? What is quantum healing with Amanda? Well, do you want like a breakdown of a session or should I begin with what quantum healing is in general? Let's talk about what it is and then maybe we'll talk okay. about respect in a session. Okay. The example I like, well, I'll start with this. Um, hypnosis is a state that you are in, the theta state. You're naturally in it twice a day. So that's right before you go to sleep and right before you wake up. So you already know how to do it. But the thing with hypnosis is we keep you in that state a lot longer. Like, I don't know if you guys have experienced um, right before you wake up or right before you fall asleep. You have access to all this, these other dimensions or you hear messages like when I get your, you. yeah, like right, like <clears throat> right after a dream, then I'll like hear a message from my higher self and then I wake up yeah, and I hear it right then and there. So I remember it and that's how I know it's important. So basically hypnosis is taking um, the client in and out of these different brainwave states with the goal of keeping you in theta for as long as possible. And that's when you have access to all those uh, different dimensions and access to your subconscious um, or your higher self. So that being said, what quantum healing is, um, I used this example the other day in the signal group. And I think Laura actually, I think that's why she has the tree in her SCHH logo. So if you think of the tree, like a giant massive tree, an infinite tree, infinite number of branches, and the trunk is source or God or creator, whatever you choose to call that. And then each branch is an individual soul. And then each twig on the branch, all the twigs are all your different lifetimes. So when you go into theta or that hypnotic state, you're able to access those different twigs on the branch of your soul. And the, the concept behind it, the theory behind it is the tree is only as healthy as every branch, every leaf, every twig on that tree. So when you're able to access and heal 
all, all those different twigs on your soul branch, you're actually healing the whole branch. You're actually healing the whole tree or the collective. The entire tree is the collective and creator itself. So yeah, that, that would be the best way I would describe it. Um, Cause I never really understood the whole, the best thing you can do for the collective is to heal yourself. It, I think it was too big of a concept for me and, and like what's so what's so important about me that if I heal myself, everyone else is doing better because of it. It just didn't make sense. But that to me makes sense. You know, the plant is only as healthy as every leaf on the plant. It all affects each other. So it's yeah. um it's like I think about and I'm not I'm not like a, a gardener, but I think about like pulling weeds. <laughs> I am like, listen, horrible. I can do laundry. That's about the extent of my yeah. domestic diva ship. I can do laundry and I can make a bed up. I don't know how to cook. <laughs> I don't know how to garden. Oh, I can cook. I love, I love cooking. I know how to cook. I got some junk in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how to dial up Grubhub. I taught Stephanie about Grubhub when she was here in Atlanta. I was like, taught her about it. I was like, this is what you do. You just go online and then 30 minutes later, it's There's actually- There's a whole world at your fingertips. Uh, <laughs> so I, I tested Grubhub here in my town. There's only like five restaurants available Same. in my town. Yeah. And one of those is McDonald's, okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's like 30 minutes. Yeah. It's like 30 minutes to like a Taco Bell in my town. I'm like in the middle of nowhere, so- are you in the? I don't. Yeah, I'm in Wisconsin, like basically in the middle of the forest. So okay. I understand my pain. Like so I can get maybe like a Papa John's and McDonald's until about seven thirty at night, and <laughs> that's that's when, about all you can get. When you're in Marietta or Atlanta, there's like literally like ten thousand restaurants to your available. Yeah, the Grubhub in Atlanta, you got everything from fast food to fine dining delivered that to your doorstep. That's wonderful. I learned there was a very good Chinese food place. Okay. And then I had this amazing salad from somewhere. I don't remember where it was, but I would use my pendulum. Can I go here? <laughs> well <Yeah. we're> gonna <laughs> keep your account it keeps all of your past orders so you can go back and be like where and was that's what I did. <laughs> yes what was that i had yes so Great order that is i think the only thing that would ever motivate me to really learn how to cook would be if i had a child um that would be i would then take the nine months to figure out how to make homemade mac and cheese basically <laughs> so um or hopefully that child's father would be very invested there in you go <laughs> there you go or, I will do the laundry. Or just you order cook. Grubhub until they're order Grubhub until they're old enough to cook. Exactly right. Cook exactly. You. Exactly. You uh, I, I might be chef. <laughs> when you, I, I eat like a child anyway. I like the kids menu. So you mean a lot of skittles. On my end, I'm, I grew up Sicilian, so I mean it's it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, pizza pie. But sorry, I had to go a little bit Italian there on you guys, but. We don't it's like matter. East Coast it's, Italian. It's, it's, we just dump whatever in a pot and call it a, whatever. I mean, yeah. I, I watched my family cook over the, the, I was about to say over the ages, over the years, <laughs> is what I meant to say. And um, I just learned that way. And, yeah, uh, you just taste test. Yeah. Needs yeah. a little more of this, a little more of that. Yes. And, and then by the time food. dinner comes around, you're not hungry anymore. <laughs> and everybody's eating without you. That's how it goes. <laughs> we can like talk more about that when we talk about spiritual hygiene. But before I forget one thing, because somebody posted on the community tab, uh, Amanda, about being um, hypnotized. And I, when I was in college, I took a class on being hypnotized and I, they couldn't hypnotize me. I can't and be. I, I didn't, I don't know if it's an RH negative thing. I, I, I was like the only one in class. I'm RH, I'm RH negative and I can be hypnotized. Oh, amazing. Okay. Because I, and I don't know if it was just a situation where I wasn't relaxed enough to be able to go into it. I don't yeah. know, but, um, it's, but 
what you're explaining it with the going to sleep and the waking up. And I know I, I, I also thought about sleep paralysis. A lot of people experience sleep paralysis in this, this time. And of course, science will tell you, which I think there's a little bit of both in this, because we do know that when the body is at the deepest level of sleep, REM sleep, the body will release a hormone, a chemical that will semi paralyze the body. And this is so you as a person do not act out your dreams. Okay, so that you can be completely still so the body can heal itself, right? So sleep paralysis, what science explains it is that the body, the chemical in the body has not worn itself out yet while the mind is starting to wake up. And that is the feeling that you get that you can't move your body and you're trying to get up. I think there's a little bit of truth to that. Yes. But I also yeah. think that you are in a, and sometimes you know, with all spirituality, there is both the, pot, the darkness and the light. On a polarized planet, you can't have one without the other. They're both going to exist. And if you don't know how to protect yourself, that can be a very vulnerable time for darker entities to come through, which I do want to also at some point speak about today as well, about the whole darker entities thing. And so um, for those people who have experienced, I know I've suffered from sleep paralysis, even though I'm also, because of CPTSD, don't go into REM sleep. That's why I have things like night terrors where I will act out, I will, I have to lock my bedroom door every night so that I don't walk out in the street in the middle of the night, you know, because that is a problem. But that has been a problem with me since I was like 14 years old. And when I was in, nobody ever thought to like send me to a therapist to figure out why I was doing this. But you know, it, it still can happen from time, even though I've gone through trauma therapy, it still can happen from time to time. And so let's talk about Amanda about the whole idea by I can't be hypnotized or how do you work with that as a healer? Um, usually, it's because of a block. It's not because you just aren't suggestible. It's because of either trauma or trauma from this life. Okay. I want to make that clear. Trauma from this life or you're recently grieving. Grief is a really big block with um, hypnotherapy. Um, and then another one would be entities. They don't want you connecting in. They don't want you to heal. Um, especially the AI, they will make people jerk or scratch or um, pop you out of hypnosis. It's happened to me. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So you, but like going through somebody's paperwork and their history and what, and figuring out what they're going through now and what's surfacing, you have a pretty good indicator of how to start off a session you know, if they're grieving, I know which path to take them down so we can get past that block. If they have entities, I know we're going to focus in certain areas according to where their symptoms are, where they're feeling pain. Um, wh whatever their symptoms are will tell me generally what type of entity it is, where the entity is in the body. And so we can go and focus in on those areas while we do the body scan and make sure. So there's several times in the session where we check for them. Um, and then when you get to certain parts, the blocks will manifest. So they won't be really, because there's different levels too of like how deep they are in the hypnosis. And so we use things called deepeners to get them even deeper. But sometimes they can only get so deep because there's a block. There might be a boulder in the middle of the garden where they're sitting. Or the garden, the flowers will start dying or dark and cold will come in. And those are all different indicators of different things. And then we address those in the moment. But some of the things, too, aren't just trauma or grief um, or entities. Some of the things are actually your physical and spiritual hygiene. So if you're not taking care of your vessel, if you're loaded with toxins, you know, you use deodorants with aluminum, you still drink fluoride water, stuff like that. Just the same kind of blocks that would block you from tapping into your true potential um, and psychic abilities, I guess, for lack of a better description. Those are also things that will um, kind of prevent you from going into um, traveling through the quantum, I guess. Yeah. So funny, as you're talking about that, my dog just started growling at something in the corner, but. <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I love when my dog does that. Like, what? Tell me, what is it? What is it? Fantastic. So Michael I start sweating. I'm like, oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Spray <laughs> that um, water. I, well, actually, my my 
I got my dragon's blood here. I got my, my holy waters in the other room, but I got my dragon's blood here. So be gone, you demons, be gone. Uh, we should have, we should have like put up a grid next. If we do this again, we should put up a nice grid around all of us because I'm sure they don't like the three of us chatting. Yo, and, well, I'm actually yeah, going to call, hey, Michael, Gabriel, yo, our bros, homies. Homies, I, I know I like calling you guys every day. I'm just gonna ask. I, I think you guys are around, but can you just come in and make sure that we're protected and the information is protected and the Zoom equipment yes. is protected? Because I do know that they can get inside of our equipment. So please make sure it's all protected so that this information that could be helpful to our viewers, to humanity gets out there for the greatest good of everyone watching right now. Um, and so... So Kuray on the... Which is a power symbol in Reiki. Yeah. What is it? Choku Ray. Choku Ray. I want so to learn Reiki. <laughs> you do uh, the swirl, and, you, and it has to pass through the line seven times like the seven chakras. And if you want to lessen energy, go backwards. But you have to have the, I think you need to have the attunements, the symbols put in your hands and everything um, for it to work, I believe is how it happens. I got to go back and read my book, but yeah. So that's something I learned recently and that I've been using on my water and on my food and on my dog's food and water and all that kind of stuff. I want to talk to you after this because I have a question about sure, absolutely. something in my hands. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm assuming when someone comes to you for a session, that's probably one of the first things you do, right? Is seal off the space. Oh yeah. I, I, oh, for me or for her? For both of you. Probably both. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, symbols and then I, I sage the crap out of everything and then I call in my Reiki guides I call in my spirit guides and my angels and everything like that and I I do the four directions me too yes so I for, do, the, I, I do the four the four pillars as well uh, there's an angel of each direction oh well, okay. I could I could even um I think I think I'm going to put together like a little pdf pretty soon but I do there's an angel of each direction and then a pillar of light comes up from all of that and then I do a blue dome and ask Archangel Michael to put a dome over my entire property because sometimes entities line up outside yes. of the house well, like me and, yeah, yeah. Um, and like even the other day like the land was scared I had like this major infestation they couldn't get in but they were all outside and so I had to have a friend help me with that because that was like way out of my league um, but I do it three times a day. I put up all my protection in the morning. I put it up um, either in the afternoon or before a session and then before I go to bed. And it's like a whole long list because I deal with some really heavy, dark, dark stuff. And I, I just want, I need a safe space. Like you have to have a safe space. And I work from home. So it's, I'm doing the work in my house. So I have to, I want to be extra careful. You know? Yeah. And that's, um, that's so important to do guys, every spiritualist, regardless of who they are is going to, I mean, even the yoga shalas get blessed and get cleaned out a bunch. And, you know, there's constantly sage burning, there's constantly, you know, that that's very important. And um, I will say again, just because I'm feeling inclined, I feel like I need to say this, it's also important to say that you know, I always say I don't consent, but something else, the darkness, the darkness also plays by the laws of consent too, but they do it in kind of a jacked up way. They find, they try to find loopholes. Sneaky. Yeah, it's, it's icky. It's gross. It's low integrity, but that's what they are. They're low integrity. And so I have learned recently as long with Stephanie from our friend, Jesse Zaboder, that we have to actually revoke permission. So what they do is they try to use your wounds, the stuff you're working through as a way in. And so every night before I go to bed, I always say, I don't consent to any dark beings being here in my space. And I also revoke any permission that you think you have to use my wounds, the ones that I'm aware of and the ones that I'm not aware of. You cannot use my wounds. That permission is revoked. And so ever since I started doing that, my house got a lot calmer. Um, and so I just want to remind everybody, and I, I feel like your shadow side, your wounds are, should be treated as a very holy process because that's the friction needed to, to ignite the change, but they will of course try to use that and invert that. So if you have a, a problem with jealousy or betrayal, or if you got a deep wound of hurt, they're going to try to use that to get in, to play with your mind, to put you in a low state of depression so that they can easily come in more. They're trying to use that emotion 
as the permission to come in and do what they need to do. Um, and so I just want to say that to everybody, like, that's something that's really helped me. You just say, you don't have, I revoke it. You think you have this permission? You don't. You don't. And once you say that, they have to follow the laws of consent. They have to. Every I didn't know. If they don't follow the laws of consent, they're in a whole shit ton of trouble. Um, and I'm serious. And that comes down with the spiritual hygiene. That comes down to like reading tarot cards on people without their consent. If you do that, knowingly do that without their consent, you're in a shit ton of trouble. And you're not in a shit ton of trouble in this world. You're in a shit ton of trouble in the, the world beyond the veil. Okay. And that I'd be way more afraid of than this world. So, um, this goes beyond tarot cards too. It, it's tapping into anybody's energy without their permission anyways. It's gross. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of channelers, I don't know if it's a lack of knowledge that they don't know it. I mean, when I first started this, I didn't know about it, right? It took yeah, me I think laws of forgiveness, if you don't yeah. know, there's laws of forgiveness for sure. Yeah. But once you, once you know better, you do better. Exactly. Now, I've had people reach out to me. Well, I got this, a spirit told me to tell you this, and it, it, it makes you feel so yuck when you get a message where someone is literally channeling you without your permission. Plus you're not probably going to get an accurate answer anyways, but, um, but it's not just the tarot cards. It's, it's just, even if you have that ability to, to tap into someone's energy, just have to be very yeah. careful. Think of, think of too, like if that person that you're not getting permission to tap into, even for us, this is a very selfish reason, but you're tapping into that person's energy you have no idea what's attached to them. That is a way for them to come in and attach to you. If that's not a good enough reason, if even that selfish reason isn't a good enough reason, then you're you're just SOL, I guess. Because um, well, I say I say this to people too. Like you wouldn't just break into somebody's house and snoop right. around and look through their drawers. Like you know, if you do that, you're gonna get arrested for breaking an entry. That's breaking the law. Same thing goes with someone's energy. And I know I'm sealed off. There's only certain people that I've granted permission to read me. And so if um, somebody who doesn't have that permission tries to read me, they're not going to read me anyway. I've made that, I've sealed that off. And so what they're getting is either information about themselves that they're interpreting as me or just uh, spirit doesn't play that way. Spirit's not going to, you know, that, that that's a law of consent for both the negative and the positive, that there has to be consent. That's why Hollywood, that's why they use movies to get our permission, guys. We know this. We've learned this over the last few years. And so, so when you're with someone like Amanda or Stephanie, who has a high level of spiritual hygiene and integrity, in that sense, you can trust when you go it to them that that should give you some, some safety to know that they are taking this very seriously. When you there, so if you're going to uh, to Amanda for a session, you're giving her permission to tap into your your quantum, your psyche, your you know. But but because you see how she does her hiking and clears the space, you know that that that's going to be safe. And I and I would assume that for any light worker or spiritual healer, if they take any information learned in a session to try to use it against the person later, holy shit, the karma that would build for you at that point. I, I can imagine that that. And I think most healers take that very seriously, like a doctor or like a therapist, like this is this is sacred information that should not be used outside of any type of session. Mm -hmm. could, could you imagine? Oh, my God. Like the things I've told the healers. <laughs> I know. So, I can I touch on something you said earlier? Um, you mentioned um, how some of these entities get permission to enter through our traumas and pains. That is actually like so on point because that's how I find out where your entities are attached in the layers of your trauma. That like the trauma, so either physical pain or trauma can create an opening in your aura and that's how they get in. And when you speak to the entities in a session, they'll actually tell you what happened and how they got in. And that is part of the process of healing. Um, and so these entities are attached to these different traumas. So in the session to release that entity, you also kind of face what they were attached to as well. And so that's so on point. They definitely, that creates the opening and that's how they get in. They feed, they are attracted to it. They wait for it. Some will wait outside of your aura for that opening. Um, so like a sudden physical pain or something hurt your heart or 
you've been a little depressed for a while and sometimes they'll even mess with you to kind of weaken it. Yes. They'll mess with you, not let, not let you sleep. Um, they wear you down and they wear you down so they can get in. And it's, yeah. yeah. I have an example. Um, if you, if you guys don't mind me sharing of what we're talking about with myself. Yeah. Sure. Back in high school. Now, most of you have probably recognized most of our subscribers. Probably, yeah, I know you two probably recognize. I know you Bryce have, I have a chronic cough. Okay. But in addition to the chronic cough, so that's to do with the throat chakra. Back in 2016, I was diagnosed with spinal stenosis from C5 to C7 in the back of the neck, still throat chakra area because it's in the neck, right? And I've always had this neck clenching. Well, I had to retrace when it first started. When did all this first start? Now, I'm 35. It started when I was um, 16 years old. Um, I went, I, I was dating somebody in high school we were extremely close. We were very well known for being a very, very close couple. Okay. He was my high school sweetheart. He abruptly broke up with me. And that trauma, that, that was one of the most heartbreaking things I had gone through as a teenager. And I remember sitting in um, band class and the net, and I was, he was a saxophone player. I was flute player and I saw him talking, like he was looking at me and it triggered me because he's talking to his best friend next to him and it was about me and I could tell. And it was like, I was going through a lot of this trauma of heartbreak and everything. And um, I'm not sure why it got to my throat chakra, but I think it's because I lacked standing up to myself with certain events that happened afterward, which I'm not going to get into because it, it happened that whole school year that a lot was going on and I, I like lacked the voice to really stand up to myself for, with a couple of things. And so retracing my steps back, I realized that I, I went to Emmy. I did have some sort of cord attachment, whatever thing on my neck. I actually could feel her removing it and it's been healing since. And I, it was funny cause I'd retraced it back and that was the event that I had retraced it back to. So you see how that, Crazy. like what you just said, you get some sort of trauma that happens. And then it's like this, you have a crack in your aura and it just, that pulled your energy. And then I was left with a chronic cough. Yeah. And you know, my vibration rate brought you that low. So when you get that gut punch, it brings your, you feel it. You literally feel your vibration drop when you get that gut punch, right? When you find out, I'm sure most people watching, when you find out somebody has been cheating on you, when you find out, like, um, when I realized my money was being stolen and I could see where it was going. That was a gut punch. That was like, I trusted these people and now they're taking my money, you know, like, and so I, that you have to then, and that's why, you know, you say like you, you take the, the clients to face the, the trauma. Well, that's what we're doing in shadow work too. That's why shadow work is so important. So I don't want people to be afraid of the shadow because the, the, the bad guys use it, manipulate it to get their consent. As long as you're aware that that's what they're doing, you can then set that intention like I do. It doesn't mean that I don't still feel gut punches. It doesn't mean I don't still have days where I struggle. Of course I do, I'm human. But I then say, nope, you don't have permission. This is a wound that I need to heal. This is my resistance to bring me. I mean, that's uh, the Hathors uh, speak about this. The Emerald Tablet speaks about this. The Emerald Tablet calls resistance or calls friction resistance and that it's necessary to take that evolutionary step up in consciousness. That friction is necessary. So that being said, all the, the parts of your life that hurt, that caused that pain are actually very holy parts of your experience. You just have to know, understand that the darkness is going to try to use that as well. And so going to someone like Amanda or Stephanie or doing yoga, something that's going to help you start to confront that so that you can work through it. And, and I see it as like almost necessary. Maybe Amanda, you can speak on that. I know we can't talk about people's experiences per, uh, on an individual level, but when you actually face the trauma and you look at it and you start to heal from it, whether in quantum healing or in therapy, whatever you're doing, you do start to then take your power back. Stephanie, you started to take your power back with your voice. And when you take that power back away from that thing that's holding it, 
you can actually feel that power coming back in the body too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was sorry, was that a question? <laughs> I just like <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I'm Vata, so my questions get long winded. Um like so when you're what facing you these traumas is it's yeah. removing the demon or the entity, but it's also allowing the person to then like trigger their growth. Yeah, some of these some of these entities had an agreement with you, like I'm starting to learn as you were creating your contract. Um, and they're like, if I'm gonna go all the way dark. Like, I'm going to forget everything, just how you're going to forget everything. But it's our agreement. I don't care if it takes how many lifetimes. I'm going to keep attaching to you. I'm going to keep finding you because we have this contract together. But it's to learn something. I We're going to teach each other something. And I hear this a lot in sessions where they're like, we had a contract together. This person's mine. I'm like, yeah, but you don't have permission to be there anymore. And then when we get them into the light, the light of truth they now just spill their guts and they realize everything that they've done and now they remember who they are so it, it really hurts them but they knew before they were going to do that that it was going to hurt once they remembered all the bad stuff that they did but they also came into it like imagine how much you two love each other to agree for one of you to be the bad guy and one of you to be the good guy and to follow each other in all these lives, like this generation, because there's like generational demons. And I'm starting to learn it's because you hadn't learned the lesson. You, it, you just let it stay, stay attached to you for all these lifetimes. And then now when you finally come to confront it and learn what you had to learn, whether that's speak up for yourself and it's stuck on your throat chakra or whatever it is, um, they came to teach you something and like you said that's very sacred and it's sacred to them as well they just don't remember and then they've been bad for so long that they have completely they think that there's no going back and their controllers tell them that they can't ever go back to god yeah. they can't that's ever go back that's... there and they beat them and they torture them and they keep them captive and they conjure them and Yep. Like, I almost feel like they're just as much of a victim, They, but they're like us. They they have amnesia. I, I, 100%, our friend Cindy, she's a, removes, uh, removes demons, and she talks about this as well. You can't just exile a demon because they're going to come back. You have mm -hmm. to actually, and I, I, I learned this in one of the grimoires. I can't remember which one, one of the missing books of the Bible, that's a spell book. So, you know, we're taught in the Western society about the fall of Lucifer, and that all these, like a third of the angels went with Lucifer. They're like, we're going with Lucifer. We're going to be demons. That's not true. That's not true. They Lucifer, stole them. And they got kidnapped. Mm -hmm. And they, and when I learned all of this, I started to have a lot of empathy for demons. Because the humans using these demons are a lot more scarier than the demons themselves. Thank you. <laughs> they are a lot. I will take a demon. The humans anyway. have a choice. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the humans have a, a free will choice and the demons. So, so when, when you talk about attachments, they are literally, so the demons get conjured up by a dark practitioner. They get pulled in and then they, if they send the demon to you, that demon literally gets chained to you. The demon doesn't want to actually be doing what it's doing. It's being forced to because it's been beaten. It's they been hate beaten. it. They hate it. They hate doing what they're doing to you. And um, they've been told that they will never be able to go back to the light because they've been so terrible that the light would never take them back. And or so the light hurts them. Yes. And so I know Cindy has the demon. So Cindy talks about when she does these sessions and she sees a demon, she's literally doing therapy with the demon. The person oh. is kind of there. The person yeah. is kind of like, demon is <laughs> so all <laughs> someone just accidentally sent a text to me instead of someone else and they were calling me like the the demon slayer and I'm like I prefer demon therapist thank yeah. you <laughs> uh, I mean, hello <laughs> <laughs> well and that's what Cindy does Cindy says like she she does a therapy session so the host the person is literally like change the demon so they kind of have to be there too but it's the demon yeah. and cindy has them look down at themselves and look at to remind them to look and see there's a light in you because they they're so brainwashed they have such stuff it makes me emotional they have such stockholm syndrome almost like the demons are being trafficked yes absolutely well they're angels aren't they they're fallen angels yeah and so she has them look down and acknowledge that they still have a light inside of them and that the, the light will they're, they're part of the light 
And then you have Michael come assist to bring them back, like basically cut the chain off, take their, and, and then Cindy said, you have to assure them that once they are convinced that they can go back into the light, you have to assure them that the black witch practitioners, Lucifer will not be able to get them again, that they will be safe. Yeah. Light. I tell them all the angels I call in everybody everybody that I work with I'm like the angels are all around you and I'm like look out who do you see and they're like oh, like they're afraid of the light and then help them find their inner light and we grow it and they start remembering they're afraid to at first they think I'm trying to trick them they don't know love anymore they don't know compassion anymore so you kind of have to like work with them like work with their ego they just know fear and they just know fear and pain fear and pain like I'm allowed to I'm allowed to share this example but um because it, we'll probably put the session up on YouTube but um there were three demons inside of this person and we started growing the light inside of them and then brought in the light and sh uh brought the light all around them right and they just started crying and I'm like what's wrong and they're like they're, I can't tell you they're they're gonna find me they're gonna hurt me again and the client saw them and just she started crying and was like their wings are broken and they're just like bloodied and beaten and I said who's been hurting you and he because one spoke for all three of them he said the priest the priest conjures us and sends us to people and my heart like sunk in my stomach and I was just like, motherfucker. I don't, I mean, I just finished editing today uh, the next section of the Sophia, Co or the Sophia, uh, the return of the divine Sophia. And it gets into all the astrocities. Like she, I had to put, this one's ac actually going to have to go and rumble because she gets into everything that the church is like, everything the church has done. And I keep telling people. And I know this, when I started studying black masses, like what's a black mass? That was kind of the rabbit hole I went down. You can't become a satanic priest until you've gone through seminary school. Mm. The, re the priests wear black robes because of the same reason judges wear black robes. I'll leave it at that. I'll let people look that up. And I'm not saying that every all preacher, connected. It's all connected. I'm not saying that every preacher and every priest are bad. I'm no, just saying, no. Yeah. There has to be some type of discernment. And understanding and that's what i keep saying with yashua and like the crucifixion like y'all crucifixion didn't happen because the god of light the as as the emerald tablets uh thoth calls him divine god divine is that's the name he uses for source is divine would never require that never would there be a blood ritual done never that's what they do on that island that I can't say on YouTube. I think you guys know the island I'm talking about. Oh, do about. you mean do you mean communion? Is that what you're well, well no what Yahshua the whole the, cro the cross in general dying gotcha. for people. Right. Doing, that's what they're doing with these children, with these little people that's on nice. the on that park in San Francisco. You guys know what I'm talking about with the owl. It's the same thing as what they're trying to sell you in church. Have common sense, have discernment and understand that yes I mean, I, do y'all remember back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, there was this woman named Squally who came forward. That's not her real name. She didn't show her face, but she did a bunch of interviews. She was a whistleblower. She grew up in this group of controllers. And um, and she talked a lot about the church. She's, and this was the late 90s, early 2000s. And she spoke about how evil the church was and that the church was not what people thought it was. And I know for me, I did it when I was doing, well, I'm still in the process of like really diving into religion because religion is such a hold on people. It's, um, if you follow the money with seminary schools, who's funding the seminary schools? I'll just tell everybody now, go look it up. Who's funding the seminary schools? Same Have you, huh? Have you guys ever seen the movie by Kevin Smith called Red State? It's one of his only serious movies. No. Red State? Red State. Y'all are giving me some homework today. <laughs> I, just, I just had um, a download come to me. So okay. Red State, Kevin Smith, he's from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. 
he makes all his money. I mean, he he makes all of his movies, I believe, on his own dime. He, you know, he's kind of... He did Dogma, right? Yeah, he did Dogma. 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 Okay. He, makes, yeah. he grew up Catholic, but he makes fun of the church so badly. Well, in, in Red State, he pretty much tells you what the church is all about. Because these people were drugged, brought to this church in, in one scene, and they're caged. And then, like, well, that's what church means. I said it's on Aquarius Rising Africa. Church comes from the sky of her, which means mind control. People in the pews were all cheering on, and it was a whole ceremony. And it, I had a hard time watching it. However, it's really funny at the end, not for a spoiler um, or anything like that, but the the cops didn't know how to stop this church so they play they blasted these horns at the end making believe it was the rapture and they all came out and they all <laughs> <laughs> so i mean he does a great rendition of like it, he 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 literally tells you in some of his more serious actually in all of his movies of what hollywood is all about now i don't know if he's good or bad or not but he tells you and i mean there's even a movie called husk and he literally is showing you how they take humans and make them into animals and because it's a disgusting movie it really shook me to my core when i watched it it was it was nasty but he's telling you I mean, even so. if you look at mithraism all the churches most old churches that have a temple underneath the sanctuary so while you're while you're in your sunday service singing your holy holy happy happy clap clappy songs praise jesus there are people below you literally doing ritual. And I'm not going to go any further than that because we know what that ritual. So how does that make you feel? And that's what I said in my last Sophia. I was like, why are people still going to church? I don't understand. This is crazy. Like you can't, you can't be out there saying, oh, Dr. F is bad. Oh, school is bad, but yet still go to church on Sunday. This is why we haven't flipped yet because you're still consenting. When you go to church on Sunday, you are still consenting. To the controllers. When you're giving the them your money, you're there. giving them your energy. And they also. You think that they're not sucking because all those people praying in one room. Do you know how much energy that is? They're taking the energy. Yeah. A baby beneath you. This is how I've, I've, I've seen it in hypnosis at a church. And we went underneath because I didn't know any of this. Like I knew that there was like weird stuff happening. But then I saw it and I was like, the heck is this? Like there, it's like a whole, like you said, it's like a whole nother worship area. And it's, it's like a sub level. It's in the basement. Yeah. It's dark. And yeah, it's, and they do some weird stuff, weird stuff yeah. down there. And they send stuff out from there. Yes, it's, they're, they're kind of like these hubs, like I kind of saw it as like a web. And um, a lot of these like really old places like basilicas and stuff they're if you look, they're really they're either on or near ley lines. And yeah. they send send stuff through these areas from place to place. And yeah, it's, so it's, I, I, saw, I feel crazy talking about it. Uh, no, I mean, so, I, I like, you can see pictures of this, guys. Like, like uh, this is all research. If she did it through her. I, I've researched. This is legit. Like, this is what's happening. And that's what I, I want to plead with people. Your church is at the tippy, tippy, tippy top. Uh, it is the Mac Daddy. It is the head of the controllers. It is I mean, far worse than medicine, far worse than education, far worse. The crimes they've done are far worse than any of these other institutions. Why is why are all the seminary schools funded by the same families that fund like CNN and MSNBC? Why? I got to look into this. The and truth the, is out there. The, the praise and worship music, by the way, that's something I want to start looking into because I want to look into what frequency it's on. Now, I sat in Catholic church, couldn't stand the organ, but as an adult, I would sit there listening to the praise and worship music. And I noticed that how I felt sometimes during times of certain songs, some songs affected me more than others. It puts you in a trance. Yeah. It's almost like a negative hypnosis. Almost it's, it, it zombifies you. It kind of like, 
it's put, you can definitely tell it's changing the energy within the room. Okay. Um, and if you notice people start to literally act back shit crazy during praise and worship. Sometimes you get some people, all these people with their hands in the air, praising God. And I always, I never was comfortable. I never could do that. And I've been ridiculed a couple times for that. I just couldn't, but, and I'm not making fun of anybody that did. I just, something was weird about it to me, but I just felt like it always felt weird. And I'm trying to kind of convey what I'm, what I feel up in my head and I'm having a hard time putting it to words, but the music that they use in church, there's something to that. And I actually want to deep dive on that at one point. Think about, yeah. Think about too the singing everyone singing the same and notes, repeat, the same words. Repeat. Yeah. A lot of the praise and worship songs, yeah. they, they'll get to the bridge of the song and they repeat it and they build up and they build up and it builds and builds and builds because it starts nice and low. And then it's a crescendo. So what are they doing underneath during that? And it's, this, it's the same songs on the same days. There's a whole like calendar of songs that you sing so on the same days. Yeah. It's you know, I, so think, I think you're onto something. <laughs> we tell because in, in, in traditional yoga, you know how you see in like vinyasa flow, they do funky things with their hands. In traditional yoga, we keep our hands because the hands are our energy. We keep them either together or very like the fingers are always together. It's very straight. You're drawing lines. And if a student mm -hmm. starts doing vinyasa flow shit in the middle of of the ashtanga practice with their hands, that's what we say. Hey, no church hands. No, no church, church hands. hands. <laughs> that's what we tell them. No, no church hands. Because the happy, like it's 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 weird. It's weird, and that's you know I I I in my opinion, vinyasa flow is designed by the controllers to manipulate the true practice of yoga. That's just my opinion. I think the yoga alliance is owned by the controllers. My opinion, um, because if you go to a true school in India, you can't even be associated with the yoga alliance, or they take your authorization from you. So they they Good. hate the yoga alliance. So um, you cannot become a yoga teacher in two hundred hours, guys. It just it just doesn't happen that way. Um, you know, it takes years of studying the, the scripture and understanding the practice before you can actually begin to teach it. So anyway, but yeah, we call it church hands. Hey, no church hands, no church. No church. Hands. Stop it. <laughs> yoga so, sounds fun. <laughs> oh God, it's I've never been to like a a real yoga class. Oh ever. girl. What is like Pilates there? and dancing, huh? Well, Pilates and dancing are amazing for shadow work too. But what is she missing with traditional yoga stuff? <laughs> well, it sounds it's scary. No, <laughs> I just do it at home. I'm gonna be honest. I actually miss going to my store because number one, it actually woke me up at like five in the morning and got my ass up at a decent time. And um, but. I don't know. It's it's so hard. There's no words to really put to it. It's it's hard, but I mean, like, I've had Bryce teach me not my sort, but you know, and then I've had Todd uh, teach me the my you know during my sort and everything. But the thing is, you have when you're going through a my sort class, you're going to go through a lot more breakthroughs than if you were to do it at home all the time. Now, I push myself most most of the time at home like i always think to myself what would todd do <laughs> instead of what would jesus do um so there's a couple different uh poses that he always had to assist me like when i would go to bind or um arms behind my back and i had to to bend over uh, and of course i don't know these pose names sorry in sanskrit um i know you know bryce but anyways I push myself to as if I did have a teacher in the room, you know, so I, I kind of have to do that to continue to push forward. There's part of me that really wishes I still had that available to me so that I could keep pushing forward because I'm realizing, see, I'm, I'm starting to notice the benefit of the practice because no, it's not even just about the significant weight loss I've had in the past seven months or eight months, but it's emotionally also I can channel my cards better and I, I can I'm sure if I try to do you know if I was doing uh, Reiki before it I wouldn't be able to really and you know use my psychic abilities as much as I do now um, 
but I'm noticing a major healing coming from it. A lot of things are purging. A lot of things are coming up. Um, and I'm healing from a lot of deep rooted pain and trauma. So, um, I don't think I would have gotten as deep into the healing if I were to just do this from home all the time. I think really going to for a second, because I, because that kind of goes into what Amanda does as well. And so, Again, I'm going to read from the Emerald Tablets here, uh, Tablet 3, the Key of Wisdom, where they say, They that are, are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. And so the idea of a teacher, the idea of having someone assist you is a priority. It is mandatory if you are on a spiritual journey. You need to have a teacher, someone guiding you. And so Stephanie, what, what you're, what you're picking up on too. So we have blind spots and that's what I'm, I think Amanda kind of picks up on too with people is that they know they're suffering. They know there's something wrong, but they can't see what it is. And so with Amanda there, there, she's able to keep them on the straight path, keep them figuring out, looking at things. Same with uh, the Ashtanga. So we have these different patterns in our body, these energetic patterns that are called uh, values and nadis. And so we have this, sometimes these patterns, these energy, now these are not things you're going to see on an x-ray or an MRI. These are energetic pathways, right? And sometimes they get blocked, they get stuck, but we don't even realize that they're stuck. And so when they're stuck, it will it'll manifest, it will show itself in the physical body. And so there's a lot that you can unstick yourself through practice and patience, but there's also blocked channels of energy that you are never going to be able to unstuck because you can't see them. They're in a blind spot. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Rolfing. Ida Rolf. She's the one that came up with Rolfing. And Rolfing is like a very intense fascia massage where it's not like a regular massage. Like there are actual, actual Rolfers versus massage therapists. There's one underneath AYA. Where people find a lot of benefit. It's very emotional. It's very intense going to a Rolfer. But Ida Rolf went around and studied uh, the human body and the human psyche for many years. And she realized at that point that there are just some patterns that we carry as humans, different for each person, that will never shift unless it is met by an outside force. Mm -hmm. And so with the Ashtanga teacher, we don't – adjustments in Ashtanga – in Vinyasa Flow, I, I understand the adjustments are really nice, feel good, and they kind of rub your back. That doesn't happen in Ashtanga. We call it cranking. You get cranked. Oh, you get cranked. and it doesn't That's what I'm afraid of. Didn't you say somebody, <laughs> yeah. like, broke your – hip or your oh, back yeah, that was a bad teacher though that was a bad teacher though the adjustment he did is actually that when he broke my sacrum it's not an, it's not allowed it's an adjustment that's not allowed and he did it on me oh I think, gotcha. I think he did it on me intentionally because he wanted me to be his mistress and i didn't know that at the time so yeah so it, breaking your bones is gonna steal so the deal like an asshole. i mean this guy like <laughs> I, I mean i can't even get into it like dude is that'll like, do it oh so psych i mean i was like part of me is like you kind of flattered like you i'm just kidding <laughs> um but um no uh but uh no but but when you're when you're with a good teacher who is uh shamanistic and of the highest integrity like todd his adjustments are very safe even though they're interesting he can and can he he knows even when he can even energetically know when a woman is about to go on her cycle right you can feel like, it in their ankles there's um he says there's a thing in a woman's ankle there's a posture he helps them with and he we can feel there's like a pulsing in the ankle that happens when they're ovulating. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And if you if you are on your cycle and you skip your couple days, you know you don't go to Mysore and you go back. He very easy on you, yeah. like not going to really crank you. So if you're bleeding, yeah, he's not gonna crank you. He's gonna he probably have you pull back. More. And so like like you had Bryce had said to me because I so just kind of a little bit of a quick story here. Now, this shoulder has dislocated several times in my sleep. Since in your sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not, um, it's not a full dislocation. It's called a sublux. Um, I have very hyperextended joints. Um, you wouldn't know that because my muscles are so tight now. But I used to be able to very – I was very hyper flexible. Um, and so this shoulder – in particular, it's happened to this one too, but this shoulder in particular is the one that is the worst. And I'll just, cause I sleep on my stomach with my arms under my pillows like this and I'll just pop out. Mm. And so I'll wake up in excruciating pain. It happens to my knees too, or my ankles. Okay, it's happened to all three of those types of joints. Now, 
there's a posture, if you can remember, when Bryce, what is it called? Rosarito Padotanasana C. So you're you're kind of like standing up spread eagle, like pigeon toed, right? And and then you ha- you put your hands on your hips and you do a couple of postures before and then you you intertwine your hands behind your back and then you have to go over. That was a big trigger for me. I would hyperventilate. And I had to kind of really think what is tri- it hurt. It did hurt, but I could only go so far. So what Todd did was he brought me down lower and he, it, but he does it in a certain way. It's not going to hurt you. You're already, your body's already heated up. So you're, you know, you're active too. And, that's, and you asked him, he was like, my 24 years of teacher teaching, no one's ever dislocated their joint because your muscles are active. They're mm-hmm. actively holding the joint in place. So it, it just literally can't happen in that, in that situation. And, um, and that's why we always tell students all the time, like a lot of the vinyasa flow shit does passive stretching. Well, passive stretching, you're going to get fucking injured. If your muscles are relaxed when you're stretching, you're going to hurt yourself. And it's not doing anything because your mus- the, the muscles and the, and the bones, I mean, the muscles and the, the tendons and the ligaments, the fascia carry energy. And so if they're not active while you're stretching, the energy is not going anywhere. It's just sitting there. But when you flex the foot, when you engage the muscles, and then you go into that mobility, it can flush. The energy can then move. You've opened up. But I mean, like for me, Prasarita Padotanasana C is really easy because I'm super open in my chest. So I can get my hands to the floor very, very easily. And so what do you do for someone like me? You do the next, which is twisting the hands this way and going to the floor that way, which brings a totally different sensation of change. And for that, I do have to have a teacher push my floor, my hands to the floor in that in that position. Because it there, oh, there's the block. And that's what we're looking for. Where's that block? Where is that? Where's that boulder? That's what we're trying to find. And you um, that you can't bind or you can't get to the floor or whatever is that that channel that's blocked, right, Bryce? No, yeah, it's and a block you channel. Work through it, you're unblocking that area, but the teacher doing cranking or the adjustments is kind of assisting it's all isn't it kind of like pushing it forward like to happen it's it's the external force of energy that ida raw figured out is necessary to change certain patterns and it is very necessary it's very necessary i i'm almost binding by myself now and i wouldn't be to that point yet if i hadn't had todd literally take my arms and wrap them behind me and help me and adjust me and literally flush out all my damn organs. Oh my God. Like you can't breathe in that position. <laughs> You're like, the, organs, <laughs> the organs carry emotion too. And so what happens, and this isn't, I just want to make that clear to people. This is not a one time deal. This is a whole oh. You're You're getting adjusted sometimes for years in the same posture before there's a breakthrough. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it doesn't take that long. You know, and then sometimes the teacher will adjust you and work with you straight up for a month. And then they like leave you alone for a week to let it all integrate into your system. And so the way I'm seeing it from what you're saying, Amanda, with what you do is you're kind of doing the same thing, just not on a physical level. You're kind of that exterior force that needs to come in to be anchored because the Ashtanga teacher has to be anchored when they're working with somebody. I mean, there's a very famous Krishmacharya quote where he said, you meet the student where they are, not where you are. And so the teacher has to meet the student, meet the beginner where the beginner is. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a beginner putting their legs behind their head. You're not. Yeah, gonna, you wouldn't be effective. <laughs> no, you're meeting. They never come back again. No, and so for okay. Amanda, she's also meeting the client where the client is and working where they are. And so I see a lot of similarities to what you're saying, Amanda, to what we do in the Ashtanga world, except for we're just doing it. Same with you with tarot reading, Stephanie. Like you're the anchor that's guiding the path. And as they say in the Emerald Tablets, he says, again, they that are got are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. And so if you are trying to deal with your own shadow work without any type of guidance, you're never going to confront the, the real big boulders that need to be confronted because you, you first of all, just we're not going to go to the gross stuff on our own. We're just not, the psyche's not, the ego's not going to let you get there, right? And so until you have somebody. Hold on tight. Yep. And and like a trauma therapist, like somebody there to guide, to anchor you, to be your anchor while you're being forced to look down this particular path. And so I want, and and so if you're not, and that's where we get like the spiritual ego, 
because um, spirituality, it, it, it walks a fine line. If you're not being guided by a teacher, you are going to fall into spiritual ego. It's going to happen. You have to have a teacher. You have to have a guide. Oh, did we lose Amanda? Hello? Looks um, real, real serious, too. Real serious. <laughs> did we get frozen? Somebody's in trouble. That's what it looks like. My internet. Oh, there she stable. goes. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. My internet is unstable. They're not liking that. They do not want us talking about this shit. <laughs> For, for, I don't the, want to talk about shit. For the witches, the, the dark witch is watching us right now. That's what I got to say to you. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna keep the going witches. Today. The witches. The witches. We're gonna keep going. You have I, I I know that the head witch is extremely upset that I have not been removed. That I haven't backed down. But honey, I got are you guys frozen again? You you're yeah, are you frozen? Yep. I think somebody's. This is I think such... somebody's spying on us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's Michael Gabriel. You think... uh, please remove anybody here that's not here for our highest good. I'm gonna say the name in my head. And Zakael, will you please stabilize the technology? Um, they. I think somebody yeah. was spying. Yeah, it's what right when you said that. right when you flipped them off, they uh, you your frame froze. They um, don't. They're very yeah, upset. Like, get some new tricks. Get some uh, new tricks. I know. And you guys, like, like oh. I know, I've been told you're very upset that I'm still here and I'm still doing this, but you know what? I got God on my side. I got the light on my side, and I have the military on my side. So, lol. <laughs> um, one of my guides is Magdalene. You guys know that, right? Like, you can't touch me. Like, you, you can't. There's nothing you're gonna you can't do. Touch the and the also, head is looking rather rough these days. So, honey, might as well just give it up, girl, because. <laughs> I, I peek every once in a while. I kind of like to know what everybody's up to so I can stay a little bit ahead of the game. Because some of my clients are people that are affected by all of this, you know. So I want to know what's going on so I can kind of, yeah, beat them to the punch, I guess. Yeah. Oh, they're not going to win. They're not going to win. Very, very easy to remove black magic. So oh, oh, my God. We have so many. I'm not even going to. There are so many light workers right now at this moment who are working. I know across the world against this this coven that are doing stuff to protect the light. So, I mean, they, they're they done. They're done. And um, all the demons they've sent to me have been removed. I'm still here. I'm still. You're not going to take. I'm not going to leave YouTube. I'm not going to. I already have a job offer into the new timeline. So, LOL. Sucks to be you, which is because you chose you, you you made your choice. You chose that. So I chose the light. I chose the light. Does it mean I'm a perfect human? Absolutely not. Does it mean I screw up? I do all the time. But I'm still every day trying to be a good person. I'm I'm trying to follow the laws of consent. I'm I have compassion. I have empathy. Lord, I drop at the at the drop of a hat. Like I'm so sensitive. Like, you know, so you guys you pick the wrong. I mean, it's not too late if you want to turn yourself in. It's never too late. Start healing yourself. Start making amends. Then you can correct your karma. You can course correct. But that's your choice. Doing stuff, to me, doing, doing stuff to me or Stephanie or Amanda is not gonna is not gonna change your luck. It's not gonna change your karma. It's gonna add to it. It's gonna add to it. So that's your choice. Balls in your court. I'm protected. I'm protected spiritually and I'm protected physically. So. Anyway, all right. That's hysterical, though. <laughs> that one's really pissed off. I, want, I wonder how the recording is going to show up, if it's going to show what you saw or what we saw, because our my end was pretty I'll funny. I'm thinking that. <laughs> I'll see, because I'm going to go back and edit this, so I'll see. But that was pretty funny, <laughs> LOL. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So, but again, as we were saying in the beginning, well, that's what we do on the light. We laugh. We know how to laugh. We know how to laugh at ourselves. Like, have you ever tried to see a, a dark person crack a joke? It's awkward. It's, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have. You've mentioned this a couple times, and I was trying to think of an example, and I'm like, eh. I've seen. Oh. I'm sure you probably can't I, name names. I'm trying to. I think there's a, a, a coven member that tried to be funny a couple times, and I was like, mm, no. 
it makes you feel uncomfortable. You're like, this is so awkward. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> like silence. Wait a second. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to laugh. Are, are you being serious? Uh -huh. I can't tell. Uh -huh. Are you serious? <laughs> you know, either either you can look at life through the lens of humor, and and I mean, they say, and, and yeah, they say, uh, uh, humor is the highest forms of spirituality. You can actually have a sense of humor, and so it's it, you know, and that's the the, the demons just can't do it. They can't. Are the demons? The demons are fine. I'm sure the demons are going to be laughing at again. Uh, the demons, I pity. It's the um, it's the humans that fucking freak me out that are the, the, the really, but their skin's turning gray. I saw their skin is turning gray. The common oh, members, their yeah. skin is starting to turn gray. Yeah. So, I've been starting to see people's eyes dark. Oh yeah. They, oh, their eyes change all the time on screen. Yeah. And not, it, and not even change. It's almost like becoming permanent. Right. Yeah. It's because yeah. Yeah, I know sunken, so sunken right here. Like it just doesn't look my, like it feels very good. They've been using my, my natal chart. They've been, you know, there's so much I cannot say on screen. Uh, I know a whole lot more about what's happening than I can actually say right now. But they've been using my energy um, to pull, to siphon that life force to keep themselves looking human on camera. But you look very healthy mm. right now and they don't. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I would never take, I would never take somebody else's life force ever. I wouldn't even think to do that. Like that would not even cross my mind. I didn't yeah. even know what the thing until this happened. It's like, how do you even do that? Um, diagnosis. I mean, I know, I know the demon they're using. I know the name of the demon. I know exactly where he ranks in the level of the army. I, I know, ex I know a lot. You should tell me his name. I will link it off camera. <laughs> okay. And I know more. I think, I don't think they realize like, cause they always think like darkness and psychopaths always think that they're cleverer than everyone else, but they're not. Yeah. They're, yeah. There's like a, a very big sense of self. <laughs> very very big, arrogant, very narcissistic. And you're grandeur. not. Yeah. The FBI has everything about the money that's been stolen, but that's the least of the concerns because I know about everything else you've done, not just to me, but to other people i know about the rituals you perform and oh when the community finds out that one of their beloved superstars of the truth truth or communing has been doing this particular drug that i'm speaking of that we all know what that is holy shit talk about vigilante justice i mean i'm not it's, single vigilante but i still can't that. wrap my mind around that stuff like it's disgusting let the well, military like, handle it let 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 the how do these the people wall. even like find each other like they're born into it. I, I think they're born into it. Like I, the, the head of this coven, who's a, has a big flat platform on YouTube or whatever it's on now. Um, from what I understand, it's not even that the name that person goes by is not even that person's actual name. Mm. Everything's a lie. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And they're, they're yeah. all like friends now too. Yeah. It's no, well, they've all known each other for a long time. They, they're all being paid. Some of them are being paid by the three letter agency. They were put in to this to try to guide people and to hypnotize people and send them in the wrong direction so that the earth is going to ascend. They do. It, it yeah. works. It works. It sends people. And then, and then when people snap out of it and then they realize their life has just completely crumbled around them. Um, and then hopefully they find healers and start going with. I've already emails. gotten apology emails. I've gotten a lot of apology emails from people that figured it out that sent me nasty comments. Oh, that's when, when I went through massive abuse for for speaking the truth and for standing up for myself and speaking the truth. I have actual evidence to prove the truth that the FBI now has and the military. The military now has four affidavits from me. Um. I know their arrest is coming. Like I know, I know their arrest is coming. I just don't know when. I think they, at this point, kind of have to suspect that their arrest is coming. Gee, I don't think so. Think I think gonna... these people think they're going to get away with this shit forever. Like, because that's just the type of personality. Narcissistic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that the, from what I understand, the military's got to be in position to arrest everyone at the same time, especially oh. the, the online. Oh my gosh! Community. Could you imagine? Because, I mean, think about it. They arrest one, then the rest are going to scatter. Right. Like cockroaches. Right. 
Don't yeah. even get me started on Maybe that. they'll get them all at a convention. <laughs> well, I wonder. I'm going to be like, that's what I am going to be eating my popcorn is when that happens. Yeah. Because like I just all- don't have to test. I mean, I'll give my deposition. I've given four and four affidavits, but I really don't want to have to like testify because I don't want to. I'm just so what this what one person in particular has done to me is beyond evil. And I can tell you some stuff off camera, Amanda, that I can't say on camera. But it is, Stephanie knows everything that's happened to me. It is beyond evil what they've done to me. I'm actually, in all honesty, I'm actually shocked they are, that I am still alive. And I'm still alive by the grace of God. God has kept me alive because they have done stuff that I can't even, I don't, there's some stuff they've done to me that I don't know if I'll ever be comfortable talking about openly. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, wow. That's so. Crazy. Anyway, guys, but I didn't expect it to go in that direction. On that note. <laughs> So why don't we, so what, this is so fun talking to you guys. Why don't we have our viewers that are watching, leave us some questions, especially for Amanda and Stephanie or anything about spiritual yoga. Like if there's any questions you have about finding a teacher, finding a healer, or more information from Amanda, I'm going to put her website again in the description box below. If you want to book a session with her, all that kind of stuff, let us know down in the comment section below. So next time we film, we can address your questions. Yeah, all right. Ladies. And if you want to ask anything privately, you can message straight through the website too. Cause I know some stuff's kind of private and you don't want to put it in the comments. So I just wanted to say that. as well. Amazing. Amazing. Also, I actually just got a text from my contact my uh, military contact. So when we get off camera, I'm going to totally read it and see what it says. So, <laughs> maybe it's so. going to happen today. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe, maybe that's why they were in our camera. They were like trying to hide. Uh, that, wouldn't that, that would be the best Christmas present ever. If these Seriously. people got arrested. Like I'm not could even. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? That would I mean, the best. energies. Yeah. The energies have been pretty wild lately. So that wouldn't even. They've been really me. wild. Yesterday Ooh. I was. <laughs> I had to take two days off this week because I was like, yeah. Yeah. All right, all you right. guys. Well, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Well-